Well, it's November 5th, and of course, that means Nintendo has their financial meeting today. They also technically have a Q&A they're doing with investors. They're doing that on the 6th. However, uh, that's actually today for us. Uh, 7 p.m. Central Time is when Nintendo's going to be doing a Q&A. So we could get some interesting news tidbits out of that that we'll be covering the rest of the week and maybe even tonight and stuff like that, depending on what is said. But we're going to first address one thing. Uh, the other day, specifically two days ago, I told you that Nintendo would mention the Nintendo Switch successor this week, and they did mention it already. I thought, you know, maybe we might have to wait for the Q&A before that mention would happen, but uh, no, it actually already happened when they revealed the financial results. And that mention came from Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa, who said there has been no changes to Nintendo's plans to announce the Nintendo Switch successor by the end of the fiscal year. Now, well, that is a pretty simple statement. It's just reiterating what they said back in May, but it also says a couple of things. One, there's been no delay, at least no official delay. Uh, Nintendo has a plan, a strategy to reveal and launch Nintendo Switch 2, and nothing has happened to that plan or strategy. Nothing going on, none of the economics out there, none of the uh, whatever, you know, sales data that we're about to go over. None of it has changed Nintendo's current plans for the Nintendo Switch 2. So that is also a nice takeaway. And I'm going to end on a bit of a positive note with Switch 2 at the end of the video. But obviously at this point, it does feel like Team 2025 has the W for a reveal in January, February, or March. Well, let's go ahead though and get into the other financial data we have. And we're going to start off first with uh, maybe the biggest negative takeaway uh, from this financial report, and it is that Nintendo has revised their forecast for Nintendo Switch. If you remember, they originally were projecting 13.5 million sales, and instead they have now revised it down to 12.5 million, and who knows, after the holiday season, it could get revised even lower than that. That does mean that Nintendo is missing their projections and uh, the stock market is responding in kind nintendo closed down four percent when the new day begins they could go even lower so that's just what's happening investors are not happy with this financial report nintendo also didn't offer any nuggets of hope so far we'll see what happens after the investor q a but right now they haven't offered any nuggets out there to provide hope to investors that things are going to turn around soon uh, by the way when i say turn around we have to keep in mind nintendo is still massively ahead of where they were 10 years ago 15 years ago uh, nintendo's in a very good spot so even though their financials are massively down year over year that doesn't mean that nintendo is in dire straits or anything their profit margins and all they're making tons of money okay but let's get a little bit into the positive side first off Echoes of Wisdom. We finally have sales for Echoes of Wisdom officially, and it has sold 2.58 million in just five days. And why do we say five days? Well, because this fiscal report only goes through the end of September. So that is only five days on the market, 2.58 million. To put that in perspective with a, another top-down Zelda game that released this uh, during the Switch era, Link's Awakening took five weeks to hit 2 million in sales. And we know that game ended up selling over 6 million. Echoes of Wisdom is way ahead of that pace in just five days wouldn't be surprised if it's at four or five million right now in fact uh in november so that's without considering any holiday sales and that nintendo continues to promote the game Ho probably hoping to get a boost of one or two million over the holidays so yeah the top down sales are looking good i'm very curious to see how the holiday period responds to echoes of wisdom so the next fiscal report i really want to see where echoes of wisdom falls in uh, i don't think it's ever going to be like a top 10 selling nintendo game but i do think it could become one of the best if not the best-selling your know, top-down Zelda games ever that being said we also have to talk about some other positives out there this one's a, a bit of a strange one thousand year door has now sold 1.91 million and with that it is now officially outsold the original release on GameCube that is a positive now when you look back on it you see origami King was the last game in the franchise released on switch and that game is sold now between 3.5 and 4 million we haven't really had much of an update since 3.5 million back in 2022 so I'm kind of extrapolating that maybe it's crawled its way to 4 million but my big thing with this is will 
the thousand year door do those similar numbers over time i think it's on pace for it i think it's clearly going to cross two million the question is can we get the three million and above i know a lot of people want thousand year door you know now that it came back to become now the future of the franchise but i think the sales numbers have to be there to convince nintendo that that's the direction they should go over the direction they've been going so uh just look at it right now as just being a one-off remaster remake whatever and moving on with our day now there were no major changes in nintendo's top 10 selling software they have now sold 1.3 billion pieces of software but their top 10 you know yeah they have some updated numbers another couple million for mario kart and all that but there's no changes no one moved positions in the top 10 uh they're just look this top 10 chart's insane if we just think about how many sales it takes to get into the top 10 on switch is pretty insane uh, like their number 10 might be playstation 5's best selling game so uh, pretty crazy in general this financial briefing showed a bunch of negatives across the board uh, most things at the company are down 30 percent or more year over year uh, that's not surprising last year they did have tears of the kingdom they did have mario wonder on the horizon they had a lot of things kind of boosting sales that they just don't have this year while they've continued a consistent cadence of release Pieces. nothing is selling at the level of those games maybe jamboree but that would be re reflected in the next financial report rather than this one so we have no idea how well jamboree is selling at this point like zero indications just some J japanese sales but a majority of mario party sales aren't in japan so we really don't know uh, how well that game is doing but this is where we take things around that even though that's a bit of a negative spin there there's one thing we have to remember, and, and this is something I would even tell investors, and maybe this even gets brought up at the Q&A. At one point, we're talking like back in 2022, uh, there was a leak from NVIDIA. That leak from NVIDIA confirmed a few things. Well, I shouldn't say confirmed. Uh, it, it, it sort of threw out there things we thought were about the Switch 2. We thought the, the NVIDIA leak the T239 in that was a Switch 2 chip because of the NVN2 mention, which we also thought was Switch 2. Over time now, we're like 99.9% .9 confident that the T239 is indeed the chip inside the Nintendo Switch 2. In fact, Nintendo literally has orders for it. So we're pretty confident that, yeah, that is the chip being used. And that, that leak back in 2022 was our first real information on Nintendo Switch 2. But that was in 2022, summer of 2022 we're now on the cusp of entering 2025 and i want to throw out there that even if even if nintendo switch 2 is not revealed till the end of march guys we're four months away i want i want to i want to just like focus on this for a moment the years of waiting right the years of speculation and rumors and, and 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 leaks and all that stuff out there i mean there's still more to come we got shipping data coming soon uh to see if nintendo has increased their orders or if we learn anything new about the components of the switch too so we still have some of that shipping data coming here in the next week or two uh we have obviously other rumors and leaks that will probably come out over time maybe even manufacturing leaks at one point but here's what we do know like definitively beyond a doubt we are getting the system revealed in the next four months. That is, man, I, I said this entire time, whether they reveal it in 2024 or not, Nintendo put a clock on this, baby. They put the clock at March 2025. The clock is ticking. Every day that passes is another day closer to Nintendo Switch 2's reveal with an end date. We have an end date. March 31st is the last possible day. And with Nintendo reiterating today that nothing has changed, things are on schedule with Nintendo Switch 2, that just builds my confidence even more. Nintendo picked the time back in May. They're going to reveal the system that time hasn't changed they're going to stick to it they didn't narrow the window like we hoped but it doesn't matter well, how much more do they need to narrow it we have a four month window and look it's probably not this month because of the holiday sales could be if you wanted to hold out a smidge of hope there could be like the game awards they could choose to use the game awards to reveal it i seriously doubt nintendo would do that but it's out there as an option but i'll just say this Nintendo is revealing the Nintendo Switch 2 at some point in the next four months. Let that sink in, everybody. The people thought, oh, man, if it's not Team 2024, then Nintendo Prime's hype is going to be at an all-time low. He's going to lose everything. Nintendo Prime is screwed. What are you talking about? 
Every day's a day closer, baby. Every day's a day to get hyped. So sure, today's financial report maybe didn't give us what we had wanted. Who knows? Maybe the Q&A might deliver some goods. But right now, yeah, we didn't get anything narrowed down for us. But we did get confirmation that one, system's not delayed. Two, it's being revealed in the next four months. Something we already knew, but it's nice to have it reconfirmed. Doubling down, I trust in Furukawa. That's all I'm going to say right now when it comes to the future of Nintendo. In Furukawa, I trust. My hype hasn't died one iota. Now, yes, I am moving to Team 2025. If it does still get revealed in Team 2024, I guess I got burned. But you know what? I'd rather be burned for assuming 2025 at this point than stick it on the 2024 hype train. But even as I move to Team 2025 for reveal, uh, dude, why does that matter at this point, man? I mean, it's just statistically what you should do. There's more time for it to be revealed in 2025 than 2024 at this point. But I'm just, I'm so excited for the future of Nintendo, guys. I know this financial report maybe wasn't the most exciting one, and investors maybe aren't that happy, and Nintendo didn't, uh, so far at least, maybe they do at the uh, Q&A, but so far haven't given investors a ton of confidence and hope in the future. Uh, they're also, Nintendo's pretty high up compared to where they once were. So uh, I'm just going to sit back and wait to see what happens. But I'm so excited for Switch 2. You guys know we'll probably find more and more ways to keep talking about this platform because it's the most exciting thing happening at Nintendo for me personally. <sighs> Since like Tears of the Kingdom, maybe? I I'm so excited for this Oh, man. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathan Ruffle Jets from Nintendo Prime. Give me your thoughts on the financial report down below, and I'll catch you in the next video.